Good day, fellow investors. We are certainly living in interesting times. And I recently came across this dispatch from Credit Suisse, most precisely from Zoltan Pozzar, Hungarian, who discusses the current situation in his perspective on war, the five wars that we are in now, not yet a hot war, hopefully, but We are in a war with the East, industrial policy are impacted, supply chains. I want to discuss the topics that go through this letter and then also give my opinion. So in this form of news, I think this is the most valuable news you can get. And if you enjoy this kind of content, I'll try to do more of these reports. Please smash that like button to support the channel. Let's dig into the content. The first topic is the world till now. How did it look till, let's say, 2020? We had China America packed, let's say, import, cheap stuff from China, dollars from America, borrowing at low interest rates, everybody happy. And on the other hand, we had Europe and Russia buying cheap gas from Russia and everybody happy Russians buying their big yachts and cruising the Mediterranean. And that was the situation till now. And everything was in harmony and the mantra was if we trade, we don't find and everyone gets along pretty well. However, that has changed and I really enjoyed also the discussion here and reviewing 200 years of history, when great powers have positive expectations of the future trade environment, they want to remain at peace in order to secure economic benefits that enhance long-term economic power. When, however, expectations turn negative, leaders are likely to fear a loss of access to raw materials and markets, giving them an incentive to initiate crises to protect their commercial interests. So this is the theory of trade expectations and we are really in a situation that requires us to know more about this. So let's discuss what the heck happened over the last few years that changed the harmony that was existing and was in place. Just an example, Trump signed an order banning Huawei in the US technology war. We had increased taxes on imports, so trade war, technology, and all other things that pushed us into this current situation. And the situation was that Russia got very rich selling cheap gas to Europe and Germany got very rich selling expensive stuff produced with cheap gas. Consequently also, the US got very rich by doing QE, but the license for QE came from the lowflation regime enabled by cheap exports coming from Russia and China. And the current wars, likely the current unfolding economic war, are about control. The control of technologies, Huawei, commodities, gas with Russia, copper. China has been buying copper mines all over the globe for the last 10 years. Production, supply chains, straits, choke points like the Taiwan Strait, the Strait of Hormuz and the Bosporus Strait. Just think, if you can block these straits over time, this one, export of oil, for example, for the whole world, and this one, another exports we see now with food and everything, and with the military of Russia, and also what we have seen recently with the Taiwan Strait and blockade of Taiwan, we can say. So, That's something that's going on. China requires South Korea to keep upholding the free nose. And we will see how will this end over time. Things still work, but not that fast. I'm trying to buy uh, thermostats and there are no chips and I'm waiting four months for these to come for the new house and uh, I'll still wait and I hope I don't have to manually adjust the heating running up and down and uh, it will be crazy. But for example, just one example, I can't buy these things here in Europe now. That is a supply chain issue, for example, and there are plenty more. Plus we have not the bricks anymore, now we have the tricks. Turkey, Russia, Iran, China, 
Korea, North Korea are getting into a bloc and fighting against the Western bloc. But not too long ago we had the Cold War, so 1989, I was living here. It was a communist country, but we would get money from here and from here, so life was good at the beginning. Then we had a war that was terrible, but also this past and then we had good times so we'll discuss that at the end how big is the impact of the current war and what's going on and what might happen in the future or hopefully improve in the future we've been there in 1989 the fall of the berlin wall that started the globalization process and what we have enjoyed over the last 30 years globalization low interest rates cheap money increased production, you can buy things, you can buy everything. So that was the world we were living in. Also with interest rates and low inflation, the world was called lowflation and globalization does. Just look at inflation in the US over the last 50, 60 years, over the last, what is this, 30 years, it has been pretty, pretty stable and low. And only now we are seeing peaking it again at around 10 percent eight nine ten percent but just a while ago it did also pick the 70s wars vietnam cold war etc so we'll see what is next and we'll see how will things be impacted but we have to see what are the key factors there we might go from an environment of low inflation to an environment of reflation and what we have seen in the 70s because all these crises that are started to protect whatever we have built till now, as they say, all those come at a cost. And that cost is the Fed's inability to raise interest rates. So yes, we are at 2% now, but inflation is at 8.5%. So if the Fed would say, okay, let's cut inflation, they could push to 10%. Hasn't happened yet, but you can see that they are pretty limited in how much they can raise rates. The world would be much different with a 7.5 or 10% interest rate. On the other hand, we might be forced to produce stuff on our own. And that's not that easy because as the Raytheon CEO says, it will take time increasing Stinger missile production because there is simply not enough supply chains to do it. This is very interesting. Total annual U.S. production of 155 million artillery shells, for example, would last only about two weeks in Ukraine, a conflict that marks the return of industrial warfare. So it's also about producing things that you might not see as necessary, but if you need to supply things from all around the world to produce enough of these things, then you are also limited with reality, not just high technology. Another great example, not just my thermostats, is ASML CEO said that he just spoke with an industrial conglomerate buying washing machine to rip out the chips to do other things with it. That's really incredible, but that is the world we are living in. As we already mentioned, supply chain risks. These were the locations of the Chinese military drills over time so they can really block everything and it is a tail risk that we are living in and we are witnessing the implosion of the long-term intermediation chains according to the credit suisse letter so masks baby formulas chips missiles artillery shells for now who knows what will be next it's not just a lack of liquidity and capital that created the banking crisis 15 years ago, but now it is in inventory lack, protection in the globalized production system, in which we design at home and manage from home, but source, produce, and ship everything from abroad, where commodities, factories, and fleets of ships are dominated by states, Russia and China, that are in conflict now with the West. This is really a great passage to read. Also, leads to the over-levered production that we have as we depend on these countries for gas, for the heating that I will use with those thermostats this winter, hopefully, and every other thing that is made in China. And this leads to the Minsky 
cycle when you invest and borrow and you have the income to pay you are hedged when you start speculating on some things and you are more levered than what your income can pay you are speculating Ponzi finance when you're borrowing to pay the interest on that debt and that happens then is a Minsky moment where you are over levered. We are currently now in production, not just leverage. We are in a Ponzi finance because we are so levered that we are borrowing to pay the production in China and everything. And the Minsky moment then refers to a market collapse brought on by the reckless speculative activity that defines an unsustainable bullish period. For example, 2 trillion of German production depends on 20 billion of cheap Russian gas. This is the overleveraged, this is the Ponzi finance production supply chain situation, which is very, very interesting. Speaking of globalization, globalization needs a hegemon to keep everything in place, needs one strong power to keep things as is, which over the last 75 years was the United States. And now the United States are doing as much as they can to keep the position. The CHIPS Act has been put into law, but China is the challenger. And to ensure that the West wins the economic war, this is also something to be discussed later, to overcome the risks passed by our commodities, your problem, chips from our backyard, your problem, and our straits, your problem, the West will have to put trillions into four types of projects starting yesterday. Rearm, reshore, restock, and rewire. That is something that we have to do if we want to challenge China and what China has been doing all along with the One Road, One Belt initiative and increasing its impact and influence over time. And then they say that if things don't change soon, there will be looming food and energy shortages in the Western world. And what they say here about investing is to mindful on the above that everything that they do, rearming, reshoring, is extremely commodity intensive. So we might see another commodity super cycle, capital intensive, means that government and also the private sector will have to borrow to execute on these to-dos, interest rates incentive, where no matter the interest rate, they will have to do it if they want to compete in that war, we need to reshore and everything. And this is a nice part that explains the cycle of interest rates, the overwhelming force that we need to build things will eventually crowd out private equity because private equity rode the low inflation cycle and the globalization that after the great financial crisis enabled decades of money printed. And that cycle is over now and private equity of the stocks might be hit as they depend on interest rates. Uninvestable for the East, why would China hold US debt if it finances the war against it. So very, very interesting. And then at the end, he closes the letter. We are back to where we started on the cover page. So the theory of trade expectations to think about in time, and who knows what we have again. Bretton Woods 3 might happen. He made another letter. And uh, the next letter will be about currencies. If you like this video, and if I can get my hands on it, why not also discuss that? Now, when it comes to my opinion, the first thing we have to understand, this is a tail risk. So it might happen, it doesn't have to happen. So it might be just noise that improves the situation, but it doesn't have to happen. Just keep in mind the 70s, war in Vietnam, Cold War with Russia, it was really terrible. And then we had 30 years of great years ahead. We don't know when this situation will hit bottom and start improving. Somewhere it will, but you never know where we are now, whether it go much lower or with already bottom and things start improving. That, therefore, it's just a risk. Good to know about it, but we never know when or whether it will happen. And that's, as I said, the current perspective too. Uh, in five years, I am sure things will be way much different for better or for worse. You never know that. And I've made a little 
diagram of what I also think about the current war we are unfortunately entering. So if this is the situation now in September 2022, the US is the power ranking number one in the world, Europe, and the quality of life, let's say 100. On the other hand, we have China and everything power ranking second currently in the world, and let's say life quality, value, work, wealth, everything 50. If globalization to continue as it was over the last three decades till 2040, I think that the power ranking of the US will inevitably go to two and the life quality will double from 100 to 200. On the other hand, China would be number one in the world and their life quality would go from 50 to 100. So equal life quality, everybody good, but we are now in five out of six types of war, fortunately not in a hot war, Hopefully we'll never enter it. And I'll put the link to this video also very related to that about changing the world order from Ray Dalio. And if that happens with the war, I think that US will in, again inevitably be second, but the life quality will not be 200 but 150 and China will be leading but not at 200 but 175. So it will be a loss for everybody, everybody loses from wars. Trust me, been in a war, done that, seen that, and the only reality is that everybody loses. And then there's something else. Perhaps we are just simply not accepting reality. Our demographics are terrible. Health, obesity, 1.5 billion in the West versus 5 billion in Asia. Huge debt burdens as we enjoyed buying cheap stuff from Asia, and perhaps most importantly, huge debt burdens. And this might all be just a thing to focus on something else, focus on China, and forget about the local educational or those problems, or that we might not simply have a working force 20 years down the road to cater for the older people. We'll need people from Asia to come here, and maybe that will balance things out and clear out the bells of war, hopefully, but it is not just China. There is much more that we have to solve at home, and then we don't have to care about China. That's my opinion. So focus on yourself. I hope the world goes on. In September, my book, Modern Value Investing, will be published also in uh, Chinese. So that's something interesting. I am for humanity across the globe, no matter whether you are pink, yellow, green, or whatever, white, black. I hope we are all humanity and not just people. But then again, it is a tail risk. We cannot know what will happen, especially as things change. Already in uh, the Czech Republic, there were protests against everything that the European Union is doing because of higher prices. And we'll see how long the people will bear the toll of such war on changes and then who knows what and where will happen. If we enter a war and we keep fighting, there will definitely be loss of life quality for everybody involved. That's it. Then on the investing trends, yes, commodities and everything, but it also depends on the price paid. And then something again, Credit Suisse cuts dozens in Asia on investment banking overhaul. So they are cutting everything in Asia. And it is, again, ask the incentive. Are they incentivized now to create the war, to create the reshoring, rearming, rewiring industry? Because they will make a lot of money as an investment bank if we have capital raises, needs, and everything. And they have cut everything in Asia because they weren't capable of doing it. So that's also, I don't think it is much influence, but if you are working for Credit Suisse, you are simply under the influence of the environment, even if not maybe intentionally speaking about it. So I hope you enjoyed this overview, extremely interesting to think about. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.